Okay, so after a very successful first start, um, I was kind of playing around with the machine, looking at a couple of other things. We were about to leave. We'd started the engine a number of times, and I decided I'd just start it once more. And it was the biggest mistake I've ever made in my life. Uh, the engine fired right up. It started to run rough. It started to produce black smoke, and then it started to produce white smoke, and it died. So, um, I hadn't, and it, it was something I'd intended doing, but not in the beginning. I hadn't drained the fuel tank. The plan was, start the machine, and what was in the filters, let it run for a while, just to make sure everything was okay, and then drain the fuel tank. It pulled fuel from the fuel tank, and unfortunately, I had pulled the cap off the fuel tank. It smelt like varnish and the fuel out of there was completely degraded. Um, when I started, I attached this little primer pump behind me and a piece of hose onto the fuel system and I started pumping diesel out into a container. Uh, most of what came out was water and dirt and degraded fuel. Uh, okay, so um, as per the previous videos, we were firing the machine up using um, 12 volt solenoid emergency as a switch in the cab. So I've got to replace some 24 volt solenoid. And also, um, I would like to run the engine again and just get a bit more fuel uh, through it. It's been a couple of days since it was run previously, and um, I want to get some fuel through the system again, so we're going to fire it up again. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some two-stroke oil to the diesel. Um, it's a trick I used to use in the past when I had um, Jags with the Ford TDCI engine. No, it was in the days before um, uh, DPF filters, but I found that um, putting a bit of two-stroke into the diesel kind of helped protect the injectors a bit. So typically I used to put about 200 milliliters to 63 liters of diesel and made the engine a little quieter when it was cold and just generally it's just kind of gives a little bit extra protection to your injectors. I uh, wouldn't recommend it on very, very modern cars because of the emissions control stuff. It could really cause trouble so um, but because the, this cat is an older engine we're gonna fire her up I've got a clean fuel filter for it we get the fuel filter in there get some clean diesel in it get some two-stroke oil in it and we'll start to back up on her hopefully on the key in the cab this time and run her for a little while just to make sure she's okay let's get started So that is actually some of the fuel that was pumped out of the fuel system last time and that was after quite an amount of flushing. Uh, as you can see it's a weird colour. Now if you're looking at this um, video and you're outside of Ireland, so just one important thing to note is that agricultural diesel in Ireland is dyed green rather than red, which I know is used in a lot of countries. Um, so but this is not the natural colour for uh, what we call MGO or Mark Gas Oil um, Green Diesel. It's just not the colour green you should see. So I'll pump some fresh fuel out in a minute there, you'll be able to see the difference. So um, something that I'm quite concerned about is because of the state of the tank, I'm worried that we may have um, diesel bug which is a bacterial growth, which you can get in diesel. It's been contaminated with water. We'll examine the fuel tank in detail in a minute. I'm actually gonna drop one of the cameras in there so we can have a look inside and try and get some video of it. Um, uh, the other thing that makes me slightly suspicious is I noticed that there's welding on the top of the tank, which makes me wonder if somebody had a problem in the past and they caught it here and caught it there. That doesn't look factory to me. So uh, we may not be the first people to um, go at this tank. Okay, let's get started and get the fuel plumbed up. Get some batteries in and get the solenoid in position. So there's a cartridge filter in the cat and there is also a 
reusable gauze. So we'll pull both of them. They've had fuel sitting in them now since I purged the fuel system and started the engine. It's going to be interesting to see how the fuel looks. So we'll just bring it out of here and pour it into a container. Uh, sorry, no, I'll step out past you. Got a container down here somewhere in the front of the machine. This toolbox doesn't give away. Okay, so uh, that's more like it. If you watch the color of the fuel coming out there, that's green. I know it's mixed now with other contaminated fuel, but that looks healthy. Uh, that's good news that there hasn't been anything nasty certainly sitting in the fuel filters and hopefully in the injectors. So I will empty this in here now, just in case we cause any contamination. We've got a barrel lined up now. As you see there at the very bottom of the filter, there is some crud coming up, but that's to be expected. Um, so we've got a barrel sitting to one side, which we'll put that fuel into in a minute now for disposal. And um, we will put this filter so here, for the minute. here again. You can see the color of that diesel, which is the correct green dye in comparison to the fuel that had been pumped out of the system previously. Now, I also left 20 liter container sitting up in the back of the machine and with some what I thought was fresh diesel on it and it had actually degraded the same way. This as well actually smells like diesel whereas this one smells pretty much like a can of paint, an old can of paint that's been opened or a can of varnish. So it literally stinks of varnish and it's a it's a funny thing because I've never noticed it before with diesel. Um, I've noticed it with um, petrol or gasoline that it does degrade with time and um, can have quite a short shelf life, but I've never, I've seen contaminated diesel, but I haven't seen diesel kind of break down like that and smell like that before, but I guess I have a lot more of it to see. So I'm gonna fill up our fuel filter. All right, clean drum of diesel and got my little priming pump on here. Just kind of pump some fuel into here. Oh, I'm going to prime it up as well in a minute. It'll just save a small bit of time. Putting some, oh, I got a funny feeling. I should probably go through there. I can't remember which side I have to go in now to get it filtered, but look, it's clean enough anyway. So, just going to pump some more fuel in. So at the moment, the um, outlets and the tanker switched off and the main fuel line and the return line are removed and we are just going to run the two of them straight out of um, the can of diesel. So I know this diesel's fresh, so I only got it yesterday. So, all right, let's dribble a small bit on the top, wet that seal of it. And I'm going to get this down here. Right, so um, just as a precaution, I'm going to drop the, um, the gauze filter as well and just give it a look, uh, see if there's any water or anything sitting on it. I'll connect um, my fuel supply line back up to here. And what we do then is we purge a little bit of diesel um, through the, the system. So it goes through this filter, it goes through the pump 
goes through this filter, then it goes into the cylinder head and comes out the other side of the head through this return pipe, which I've just stuck a temporary pipe on here. So we purge a bit of diesel into our waste diesel container first. Make sure we've no water or anything dodgy sitting in the engine. Um, one thing I'm going to do before I forget is we still don't have a new airbox, so I had the old airbox connected. I'm going to disconnect it because that is full of crud. And just make sure there's nothing the turbo can ingest. And also, um, just a good tip if you're um, if you're worried about an engine running away, it's always good to have the intake open so that you can chalk it out. So it's down in there. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so fuel in here looks pretty healthy. I'll just pour some of it out just to Yeah, I'm happy with that. There's no additional um, crud coming out of the fuel system. I say I was just a bit concerned when I saw the fuel that had been running through the machine, the colour of it. So I'm just going to run, grab a little bit of two stroke, throw it in here. Can I add some two stroke to my diesel? Throw a little bit into the filter. It's more in there. And just give it the uh, Injectors of more lubrication. Can I run this fuel through it? <clears throat> Sorry, tighten this fully. Gonna pump some diesel into it. Right. Tighten that up. some of its own primer mm. the thing that is get a return line into a waste easel container just for a second mm. see what comes down through the system that's coming through there looks clean so we just put it back into our container <sighs> I got a little there and I'm gonna get um, our electrical system sorted out and we'll try and fire it up Okay, so I uh, picked up a replacing 24 volt solenoid, uh, a little bit different than one that was in it, but the um, 
it's rated about the same it's rated for 200 amps which is what this one was good for before it rusted out so i'm just going to strip out the um 12 volt one that we had in there and let's just change this connection and the, the wire from the cab so we should be able to turn this thing over with the key as soon as i get that done so I'll just get the other one disconnected and get it out of here Okay, so the um, I've got the solenoid replaced with the correct 24 volt one. So I'm just going to remove um, temporary wire in there to the cab, connect up the batteries, and uh, give it a swing. See what happens. Okay, so um, hopefully this time now I've got the um, machine starting from inside the cab. So I've replaced the solenoid, connected it up outside, and uh, we're just going to give it a crank now, see if we can get it to fire. So give it a shot. Key on. We've got ignition lights. <laughs> We still got absolutely nothing back there, it's not cranking. Uh, it's just typical. Um, right, back to it. It looks like our new sun light. <laughs> there must still be a wearing problem somewhere in the cab. So I'm just going to connect the um, bypass switch up again for a second just so we can start the machine. And I haven't brought my test gear with me, so um, diagnosing the problem will have to wait till the next day. But We'll just get power on it for the moment just so we can um, get this engine fired back up again. So. Okay, take two. Uh, let's turn the battery master back on. Run around. Turn on the ignition. And use this fella. And easy as that, fired straight up. Very good. I'd left the main fuel feed down under the machine to try and um, to try and drain diesel out of the tank. 
couldn't get it to drain. I must have left the return line and I separated it up the side of the machine that's just fallen down. And then started pouring diesel out. So it's useful in ways in that at least I can now drain the tank without having to pull the main stop out of it and absolutely destroy myself in diesel. But uh, no, it could have just happened in a more controlled way. Okay, so um decided I might as well just drain the diesel tank um, out through here, out through that return line. It's just cleaner than uh, pulling the plug in the diesel tank, which I've done in the past and got covered in crud. Plus the fall in the machine is taking um, most of the water and things away from the drain point. Uh, when I looked into the tank, it's actually leaning towards the, the outlet and the return, which we have in this case. Uh, so I might as well, while I'm here, just drain out the tank now and we try and get some shots inside the tank then. Um, what I think I'll do is remove the tank uh, completely from the machine and steam clean it, just to get the crud out of it. And what I'm going to check online then to see if it's available for treatment of diesel bulk just in case and try and get some kind of a, um, an additive to throw into the fuel. So you know, let's check this container. I think I put um, about six or seven gallons in this thing. When I put fuel in, it lasts us stupidly put fuel into the tank without um, really checking it properly after I drained it the first time. So, um, first time I drained it off after the initial uh, problem where I pulled the water and things into the fuel system, I drained probably about 10 gallons out of it. I've emptied that fuel into um, our waste fuel barrel out front. So uh, this diesel coming out looks pretty clean, but uh, I mean, there's absolutely no point in risking it. I'm just gonna send, put this in with the waste as well, more than likely. Um, I certainly won't be putting it back in the machine. I wouldn't risk it. And try and do is catch maybe the last litre or two that comes out of the tank and um, we'll see what's in it. But I know when I tried doing similar with the um, with the main fuel feed, I couldn't actually get a decent enough flow out of it. So the return is flowing better. But um, I would say that once we start to drop towards the end of the tank, that return is probably going to block with crowd as well. But we'll drain what we can out. Um, might look messy and a little bit awkward, but believe me, it's a lot um, It's a lot cleaner than pulling the main plug out of the tank. Because even with a large funnel, um, it's very hard to catch all the diesel as it comes out. Flow from the back of the machine has slowed down, so I'm just going to see if I've got a spanner. That drain, I'm going to try pulling it. So, it would appear that the tank is pretty much empty. Um, and we got a tiny little, a tiny little bit of fuel out of that. Okay, so I can actually feel. Oh, it's like there's a slug or something inside this tank. Um, there's just a lot of crap inside the drain point. This tank is nasty, nasty. It's going to need um. And these are serious steam cleaning. I'm going to see. I left the um, left my LED light at home, but I'm going to see if I can get us a view inside the tank. I'm going to try and shine, light my phone into it and drop the action cam down in there, and we'll see can we get a uh, get a view of it. But, um, I think I'm going to fire up this engine once more as well before I leave, I know I probably shouldn't do it given what's happened in the past and I've done things like that, but I just want to hear it one, one more time before I get back to base and start editing this video. So, let's just check our container at the back of the machine, see what we're doing.
keys on. Let's come over the back. There she is in bed. There's some suspended dirt in there, but then again, this container was dirty when I started to use it. But you can see that is a colour of agri diesel or um, mark gas oil, as it is known by the um, oil suppliers. That is what it looks like. So, totally different. Um, I know that the UK uses red dye and I believe the US uses red dye and Canada. Um, so we may be unique in having green in our fuel because of the fact that we have a land border with um, the north of Ireland which is a different jurisdiction. So we use green, they use red. So that um, it's to, to prevent smuggling of fuel across the border and just to distinguish the two areas. So I'm just going to empty this into our waste diesel container. Um, I'm not going to put it in the barrel for the moment because I think um, this fuel actually looks quite clean. We might be able to use it just for rinsing the tank after um, after we've steam cleaned it. So I'm just going to hang on to it. I'm going to keep it separate, apart from obviously the dregs in the end. I'm going to put in the um, into my waste barrel, but I'm going to keep it separated from the other waste diesel for the moment. Um, that diesel is fresh. It's, I just threw it in there. Um, the last day when I had a problem with the, with the diesel, the dirty diesel being picked up, I drained the tank and put that in there. So, um, I think now it's just a case of tidying up my pipes and I'll leave that return line sitting in the container and I'm just going to fire the engine once more. I forgot my LED light, but I'm going to try and light it with my phone and I'm going to drop the little knockoff GoPro down inside the diesel tank. It doesn't fit. <laughs> Um, Alright, I'm just going to try and use my phone. Try and switch on the light. And um, see if I can get some video inside that tank. Got some video of it. It's kind of hard to see, but got a crud sitting in the bottom of that tank. Okay, so that's about it for today. Um, we've proven that the engine runs all right. So I guess now we can push ahead and pull this diesel tank off, give it a third of flush, uh, order the parts or the pump, and organize to get the machine work done on it. So what we're looking at at the moment, and as I've said earlier in the video, I'll go more in depth into the pump. Um, the, we'll get a good video of the reassembly and I'll be able to kind of show you what happened when the pump failed as well. You know, you've seen the bits that came out of it and a small bit of footage of it, but uh, we'll cover that properly. But um, we'll get those parts in order, so we need a set of pistons, uh, we need the retainer plate, probably the ball guide that that retainer plate runs on, and um, we need to get the cylinder block machined. So we'd need to get the, the bores, the tops of the bores addressed, just get them kind of dressed up a small bit. Need to get the brass surface in the back of it that mates with the valve plate polished and we need to get the valve plate itself polished and of course the swash plate needs to be polished so we'll do it now that i'm confident the machine is going to run and that the engine is healthy and that most of the electrics and things like that are, are pretty much okay in it um we can start spending money now and try and get this baby to work so hope you enjoyed the video uh, if you did, please hit the like button below and also hit subscribe so that you can come back and join us for the next video. As I say, if you haven't seen the previous video, uh, the link is in the description below. Uh, also, please turn on the notifications so that you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. And as well as that, that helps me. So, um, the more help I get with this and the more notice, the more content I can bring you. Really enjoy doing it. Um, really looking forward to the next video. Thanks again for watching. Have a good one.